Cash Flow Diary Podcast, episode 407. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cash Flow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Massey, and I'm glad that you're here today because, as you know, we often talk about assets, and, and I mean assets of all kinds, and today is going to be absolutely no different. In fact, today's guest would say that you and I are neglecting our number one asset. In fact, we are not taking care of our number one asset, and most importantly, she's here to help you and I do exactly that. And I know some of you are thinking, what is my number one asset? I don't have any assets, Jay. I'm just getting started. Well, you're wrong. We all have a number one asset and you've had it for quite some time. And I think with the information that you gather today, you'll be able to make some actionable steps towards improving the value of that number one asset. And I know you like doing that. I have with me today, Eliza Bacote. Now, here's what I want to tell you. She's got more initials after her name, but I don't want you to pay attention to the registered nurse and, and, and the, the NP and the, the MSN and all the other things that go after her name. Because here's the thing. What's important is that for 13 years, she's worked in critical care and ICU, and she's seen the inside of what you would call modern medicine and decided that, you know what? There's a better way. And she's here to help you and I, as the entrepreneur, understand that better way to take care of our number one asset. So hopefully you are ready to make some small but impactful changes very, very consistently. Help me welcome and listen to Eliza Bacot. Eliza, are you there? I'm here. Thanks, Jay. That's a wonderful introduction. I really appreciate that. And I'm really, really excited to be here today talking with everyone. Good, good. I am glad that you are here too. Now, this being your first time here, uh, I have to ask you the same question I tend to ask everybody else. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. So I tend to look at today's entrepreneurs a lot like yesterday's superheroes, you know, like Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman even. And I think entrepreneurs and superheroes have a ton of things in common. Chief among them, occasionally as an entrepreneur, we can imagine ourselves fighting, you know, fighting the crime of the the ignorance sometimes or the fact that people are using our products and services in, in a way that save and change their lives. And we can see ourselves in capes and tights and all kinds of things. But also, like a superhero, an entrepreneur has a beginning. You know, if you think about Peter Parker, for example, there was a time where he was just a kid taking photos, going to school, trying to, you know, make ends meet, etc. Then one day something happens to him. He gets bit by a spider, decides that he's got this power and discovers it and chooses to use it for good. So my question to you is as follows. <laughs> before all of the initials, before working in, in modern medicine, before even just thinking about the idea of the organic south your 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 platform and blog where you are sharing all of this information before all of that what we want to know is who is eliza bacote well i grew up in the south i was one of four kids and i had a pretty normal upbringing something that was kind of born in me from a very young age this really started in science class, was just an absolute love of the human body and how extremely detailed and how intricate and just how impressive it, it really was. And so, yes, before all of this work in medicine and before the organic South, I was just a little girl growing up in uh, Marietta, Georgia, and had a deep, deep love for anatomy and the human body. 
And that kind of took me along a path of, uh, of into medicine. When you love that that part about science, that's that's the direction that we go in. Interesting. Yeah. No, no, keep going, keep going. I'm just saying interesting because I, I, I've no one's ever described science from the perspective I'm <laughs> the life sciences from the perspective I'm hearing you from because I definitely don't think of them this way, but I, I'm learning already. So keep going. Well, it was for me too when I started to learn more and more about the human body, and I started studying it, and uh, you know, went to school for it. I just became fascinated. I would sit around and look at people, and I would think, wow. In our everyday life, we just never really consider all the things that are happening in our body that are going on right now. It really is a miracle. I mean, it's divinity. It's an absolute miracle. And, um, you know, I just became obsessed with wanting to understand it more. And it's kind of funny because you have the positive and the negative of looking at that, right? You, you think that, wow, I want to understand how to make that function really, really well. My body function really, really well. But in our society, when you love the human body, you go into medicine, which is basically really studying disease and how do we stop disease and how do we, oh, let's ameliorate disease. Let's put a bandaid on the symptom, which is mostly what we do in modern medicine. It's not really studying, hmm. wow, how do I make this organism myself function optimally? How do I pour things into it that are fantastic for it, that help it function at its best? So we practice very reactively instead of proactively, um, which kind of sums up in a nutshell the transition yeah. that I've had in a way. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing that because I think about, you know, the number of people that are listening right now uh, we we spend a significant amount of time building a business or an idea or developing a product or a service and coming up with a business plan, making sure that the quote unquote business once it's born is healthy. But I think the phrase that you used that caught my attention was how do I get this organism to function optimally? And that's that's not a conversation that, you know, I, of all the groups and, and organizations and places that I've been, not often do I hear the entrepreneurs getting together going, okay, I, I know about my product and service, but how do I get me to be the best physical me possible? You know, that it's, but yet at the same time, as you were just saying, we're typically reactive to this. So take us on this journey, if you will. How do we go from uh, l- little girl in Georgia to the Eliza book we have today. I'm, I'm just assuming that there's a path. Well, how long do you have? Uh, <laughs> a lot of detours, right? No, but what you said is very true. And I'll just touch on that for a minute and then I'll kind of elaborate into my story. But uh, it, this is so true. We've Now that I'm in the entrepreneurial space as a female, I'm constantly focused on how do I grow my business? How do I reach more people? How do I impact more people? How do I make people better? But, you know, it's um, it's one of those things that I, I had to sit back and look at myself and like, well, I'm not actually creating good ideas or good things or being creative if I'm not well. If I'm putting garbage into my body and I'm not taking care of myself, then I'm actually not helping my best asset. And it's funny you mentioned that because where we met at that entrepreneurial conference, I kind of looked around and was like, well, wow, people are really not that well here. And we're not even starting with the basic foundation of being an amazing entrepreneur because we're not starting with us. And we're just so focused on the business and what we need to do. And and some of that is great. It's purposeful wellness, right? Part of wellness is living your purpose. But uh, we just kind of love to ignore those things until we're, hello, in an ICU and and not well. And then we can't even enjoy the fruits of our labor. And I've seen a lot of people that are very, very successful entrepreneurs and businessmen that for my patients. And, um, at that point it doesn't matter, but my journey really, um, I just, you know, went on to the university of Georgia and started studies in pre-medicine. And I had a really cool person speak into my life and was like, do you know what it means to be a nurse practitioner? And I said, no, and, uh, started learning about that field. It was just kind of a, a nice happy medium where you could, function autonomously in the medical field and um, no, I have to go to medical school. And so I loved the fast paced environment of critical care. And so I went on that path into the ICU, taking care of people when they're really at their worst and very, very sick. 
And um, sometimes that means helping them die really well. And sometimes that means, you know, making them better in some ways. And, you know, got a master's degree in that and just to continue to function in that environment and was convinced that this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life because this is the, the path that I've taken with a lot of school and a lot of investment in time and monetary investment. And what was interesting is about eight or nine years ago, I was working in the ICU at Emory in Atlanta, and I had a very good friend who I have to mention, Erin Hanauer, who is from California, and she started also speaking into me health and wellness, and we would sit around and have conversations about, wow, how do we not end up like some of these people? I had been in medicine long enough to see a trend of extreme amounts of disease, growth and inflammatory disorders, autoimmune disorders, things that were really preventable. So I just started researching food and what was being done to our food and our food culture. And, you know, the majority of us have no clue. And as I dug deeper and dug deeper, started to make all these changes in my life personally. And we're talking, I'm in my mid-20s, so I could wreck my body at that point and rebound pretty fast. But... <laughs> But I was really starting to become aware. And um, so it really started with food for me. And then I would say probably about four years ago, I was actually had the idea of the Organic South and came down to visit a local farm to blog about it. And we, we live in a wellness community called Serenby. And so we changed our life and moved there. But I didn't really consider the products in my home, the chemicals in my body, other aspects of wellness until we really discovered this wellness community. And actually, ironically, my graduate school instructor from Emory introduced me to essential oils. So I completely, at that point, I questioned everything. I questioned everything that came in our home. I questioned, you know, everything related to what am I putting on my body? What am I putting in my body? Um, what does wellness really mean? And how do I really fill myself up with wellness so I can function the best? And I think like a lot of us that start out, I would have never even imagined I would have been in the entrepreneurial space. Uh, I was used to going to a, a building and receiving a paycheck. I had a W-2 job. And I thought because I was trained in that, that that's just what I had to do my whole life. But in my alternate life, I call it my alternate <laughs> life, I would tell people, oh, don't take that medication. You can use this essential oil for that. Mm -hmm. Or, hey, um, don't do that, do this. And so I was really living a double life, going to the hospital, prescribing drugs, um, you know, ameliorating symptoms. And then in my everyday life, everybody would come to me and say, well, go ask Eliza. She's that green organic person. She'll tell you what to do. This <laughs> <laughs> That's total superhero, by the way. You've got this alter, you've got this, the, the secret identity going on. No, uh, I totally connect with the story you described because I was, I was living two different lives, really. That's really, really interesting. Okay, so I, I got a couple of questions here because you said some things that I think are interesting that the entrepreneurs would like to to, to know more about specifically. Um, like one of the first things that you said, you, was like, you, you said that there was a lot of school, a lot of time, a lot of money invested. And, you know, you, in your head, you were used to the, the paycheck, the job, that whole way of life. So... Often, as an entrepreneur, like I said, when you get hit, bit by that bug, that spider, you, you realize, oh, I've got something special here. And then you're faced with the reality of, OK, well, what do I do with it? Do I do anything with it or do I just <laughs> kind of continue to hide out and make no change? Yet not everybody's able to muster the courage to go do something with it. But you did. So my question is, is where does that courage come from to say, you know what, this is, yeah, this is who I've been. And yeah, I know I made significant investment, but I'm gonna call that so what, and now focus on this new version and, and, and move forward. Where does that come from? Well, when something changes your life so much, like that thing changing my life so much for me was essential oils, because until essential oils, I didn't have a replacement for a lot of the things in my home that I wanted a replacement for. And when something is so inspiring to you or changes your life so much, you have to share it with other people. It, it, you're compelled to. And sure, the easy way for me would have been to continue working part-time in the hospital, receiving my paycheck, 
that's that's not a bad life, okay? And don't get me wrong, there's this article circulating circulating around about wanting a mediocre life. And I look at that and I'm like, oh, that's just not me. And I just knew in my heart, I have so much to tell people. I've watched people die. That's pretty compelling. When you watch a lot of people die, you're like, I don't want that to happen to people. And what I have to say and all the things that I know, if I share that, I know that people can be more well. So for me, it was a very um, compelling thing. But I can tell you, there was a lot of fear. I mean, when you have to hire a coach to tell you to quit your job, you have some issues. <laughs> One or two. And that's <laughs> what happens for a lot of people is that they, they've got a side hustle going on. They've got something that they feel passionate about that their friends are coming to them like yours were. They were like, hey, go go talk to Eliza. She can tell you what to do. I can give you some medicine. But if you really want to fix it, go talk to Eliza. A lot of people are experiencing that in various different forms, you know, whether it be health related or, or whatever it is that they're gifted in. But right. the courage to step out, that's a that's a scary spot, is it not? Oh, it's it's terrifying. Like, I mean, wake you up in the middle of the night, terrifying. Like, right. you know, do we have enough money to even do this. Can we do this? But for me, you know, even my husband was so supportive. He was like, I told you to quit your job a year ago. You're not fulfilling your purpose. You have something. It doesn't mean that all of that stuff before doesn't matter. All right. of that matters. It's a stepping stone, right? It's mm -hmm. building you. Maybe I wasn't ready to be a leader or an entrepreneur five years ago, and now I am. So I think it's super important, too, to look at where you've been before and say, okay, that's led me to this purpose. But you have to think about your deathbed. That sounds crazy, but you have to. I have seen so many people with so many regret, regrets. And I mean, I just didn't want to be that person. I didn't want to be there saying, wow, I totally should have done this. I should, mm -hmm. There were the barriers. There really were no barriers. And because I've seen so many people like that at the end of their life, because I was there, you know, being the provider, watching them die and listening to these conversations, you know, if there's anything I can even impress upon people today, you know, love to talk about wellness and all the things that can make you a super crush it entrepreneur, but you just have to go. You have to do it. If something is calling you, I promise you when you're on your deathbed, it won't look that big. It won't look that complicated. It just won't. And you'll just be mad that you didn't do it. You know, what's, what's interesting about what you said there is, uh, you said there were no barriers yet when you're first starting, all you can feel like you see are barriers. You, you know, sure. we're confronted with the, well, I, I don't know this and I've never done that and I'm not this. And what, I, how did you get through that process? Emotional wellness. <laughs> so this is <laughs> when I, cause I went through so much of that. No, there's too many people in this space of wellness. And I started training myself to argue with myself. So oh. every time I would have that, no, it was like me. You could imagine the conversations in my head. It, I probably was certifiable at that point, but <laughs> truly this is what we have to do because it's that inner negative voice, right? That can destroy us. And imagine this, if you never do it, imagine all the people that you won't impact. That's imagine if you could see that playing on the screen in the future, but as it would say to me, well, you, nobody else needs to be in this space. There's plenty of people in the wellness space. I would say, yeah, but you know what? I'm different than them. And there's a lot of people it's going to take to initiate a wellness revolution in this country. Not one person can do it. There needs to be multiple, you know, for everything. Um, I can't leave my job. I need the income. Well, okay, you know what? I could cut back on this a little bit. I could cut back in this area a little bit because this is important enough to make some budget cuts so I can move forward with this. And every excuse, they're really excuses, right? Mm. That come up, I would just have this conversation. And I would also say it out loud to someone that I trusted or that was filling me up and say, okay, what's your counter argument to that? So what becomes a long list of barriers and excuses really is like, no, I just need to look at the other side of this. There's always a way out. If you really want something, if you really want to do something, you'll find a way. You will. Yeah, I, I agree. I, <laughs> you know, I agree with that. So that <laughs> that's <laughs> easy. That's easy. But and, and that but that's where we can get 
caught up though that's actually the the trap that i have found not only for myself but for a number of other entrepreneurs is we really want to see what it is that we've envisioned actually be born come to life and to the just the what it takes in order to give and and to to make life happen i mean it, that takes a significant amount of energy and the challenge is is that when you are really in the zone it doesn't feel like you're working so you just keep going and you just keep going and things like did i eat today suddenly become like you know you just forget did did i drink did i sleep have i slept when's the last time i mean you you just lose you can lose track of those things but yet you're harming your best asset right and so, so then that which then brings the question, because you you said it, you hinted at it, and I, and what does wellness really mean then? Hello there, entrepreneur. This is Jay Massey. I know that if you've ever gone over to the site cashflowdiary.com, you may have asked yourself, where on earth do you get a domain name from? Especially as you are beginning to build your bigger, better, better business, you need a web presence. You need the email address. You need a way for people to contact you electronically so that you can stop doing the at gmail.com game. Well, the good folks over at GoDaddy have definitely supplied us with every domain that we have ever used. So what I want you to do is I want you to go over to trygodaddy.com forward slash cashflow diary. Again, that's trygodaddy.com forward slash cashflow diary because it's a quick way for you to get set up to capture your domain name the exact way that you want it. They got easy search functions. And most importantly for you is that you'll be up and running today. As I said, once you get started, stay started. Don't let small little obstacles of how to get your own domain name going stop you. So again, go to trygodaddy.com forward slash cash flow diary. And let's get back to the rest of the story. So that's a great question, a very broad question, right? That right. really could be 10 podcasts broken up. But if we're going to just kind of really sum it up, it's an intentional choice of moving forward into improving. Really, wellness is broken up into six dimensions, okay? Mm-hmm. So if you really want to get specific, you have mm-hmm. occupational wellness. Mm-hmm. I was not very well in that, right? Because I wasn't fulfilling my purpose and I felt negative about my job. Mm-hmm. Emotional wellness, physical mm-hmm. wellness, spiritual wellness, intellectual, and social. I think most of us tend to think about wellness related to physical, right? Did you work out today? You know, what'd you eat for lunch? But it's so much more than that. So that's really the six dimensions of wellness. If you really want to look at that, you know, from a, okay, what is it? But it's really the practice of being extremely intentional about improving something in your life that, you know, when I meet with most people, Mm -hmm. I'll say to them, okay, what's three things that if we're better right now in your life, you would feel like, okay, I'm more well, I'm more centered, I'm more this. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of honing in on those things. Like for instance, if you get in the zone, that's fantastic. And that's great, that's productive, that's so good for your body. You're releasing really good neurotransmitters and hormones that are sparking creativity, but, That means if you do that, you need to set an alarm on your phone to make sure that you're putting food and gas into your body. I mean, you wouldn't keep driving your car around if you didn't have any gas. (laughs) You got to stop and put gas in it, right? No, you would be pushing at that point, but yes. And so those little things that you do are super important. The problem is this. We don't think at the culmination in the long term. We think sometimes in the short term. So they're like, ah, it's not going to be that big of a deal if I don't eat lunch today. Ah, it's not going to be that big of a deal if I get up at three o'clock in the morning and I, you know, I have a 20 hour day today and I ignore what my body's telling me. But it's the culmination of that over time that actually creates inflammation and illness in your body. It's ignoring those things time and time again. And it's the stress, too. Stress is such oh, a big there's deal. No stress. There's no stress. There's no stress. No, 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 no. I would, I would venture to say that with the food piece and the stress are the biggest things for us as entrepreneurs, right? Because it's, it's definitely you're sometimes a one-man show, right? And yeah. – So stress management is so huge for that. And, you know, I do want to say this, 
this can feel overwhelming to some people. I describe those six dimensions of wellness, but this is a conscious choice. When I detoxed my home from chemicals, I did one product every month, one. I just, one month I was huh. like, okay, we're gonna find a new hand soap, one that doesn't have these bad chemicals. And it was easy, it took me a year, right? But I was making steps forward every time. Right, right. I get it, I get it. I mean, but yet at the same time as a, <laughs> if, if if anyone listening is like me, they're like, no, let's do it all. Let's do it all right now. Right. Uh, <laughs> let's get just rid of it. So I, I can get that. But but here's the question then, because I know, you know, as I contemplate these things, it, it was a little while ago, I decided that, you know what, uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to have a morning routine. I'm going to go. But in order to do these things correctly, uh, it, it started with going to bed early and I started going to bed between nine, nine thirty, up at four thirty, that type of thing, making sure I had the proper amounts of uh, water, not coffee, not soda, water, <laughs> Some, specifically water, in order to to make everything else, you know, continue to to go well and work. And that's worked out very, very well for me. Um, but that was like all, you know, I, I tried to tackle, so to speak. Now, right. my question, though, is if you're mentioning all six of these different areas, and we've already feel overwhelmed by, well, everything we're trying to do. Right. Um, how on earth, or, I mean, do, do we take this overwhelming topic and, and, and put it into bite-sized chunks and fit it into what is an already overcrowded schedule to, to make some of these changes? You're saying, how do you do that? <laughs> yeah. You just start with one thing. Uh, for instance, Okay, what if I told you that certain foods that you're eating are potential actual neurotoxins and can slow down your creativity and your brain function? I just Would hope Chick-fil-A is not on that list, but other than that, keep going. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about that another time. That's another oh, no, no, not my Chick-fil-A. All right, go ahead. But seriously... If you're an entrepreneur, right, you really are invested and care about growing your business, growing other people, helping other people in some way. But if I told you, hey, this thing that you're eating every day and a product probably that you eat is actually slowing down your brain function and makes you less creative and you don't even realize it, right? Because your body's so used to it. It's just, you know, found some sort of normal balance to keep functioning. But if you remove that substance, you have unbelievable mental clarity and you feel better and you feel more creative. I mean, every entrepreneur is going to raise their hand right now and be like, what are you talking about? Tell me what you're talking about right now. Right, right, right. Right? Because right. we're all motivated to be better in our business. We just don't always tie that to our own wellness. That's a problem. And so if I told you what that food product was, mm -hmm. you know, there's a, I could give you 20 things, but let's just say artificial dye or aspartame then you're gonna be more conscious and aware of that. And so I would tell people, start with one thing. Start with one thing that you know that you're doing right now that is holding you back from being more well. And for everyone, that's something different. Not everybody needs a food consultation to improve their food. Not everybody needs a spiritual consultation to be more mindful and to be more aware. But start with one thing that you know is holding you back and just make a change in that one thing. And I guarantee you, once you see the positive feedback loop from that and the positive reinforcement for that, you're like, okay, what's, okay, I kind of tackled that and managed that. Let me move to the next thing. And this is about like slow changes. And don't get me wrong. I love meeting with people. Then they're like, go through my home. You're going to do an in-home detox consultation. I want everything chemicals out of my house. And I love those people. It's so fun. I'm like, I'm going to revolutionize your life today. And one day, like, you'll look back on this day and you will never be the same. But for most of us, let's face it, we are so busy. It is so difficult. You know, I don't have time every day to sit down and read an article on this or that. But most of us know if we tune into our bodies a little bit, just a very basic amount about health and nutrition and about wellness, that we can make that change starting with one thing huh i'm telling you it, it sounds overwhelming but you're right and it's over time and i think that's part of the challenge though uh, eliza is that it doesn't the the damage doesn't happen instantly 
uh, nor does the the benefits. It's like, you know, if I put my hand on a stove and it, it's hot or inside an open flame, I get an immediate feedback. <laughs> I'm like, oh, don't exactly. do that. And by the time we found out that, that what we've been doing is not good for us, it, it can feel too late or it feels impossible to, to swing the other direction. Uh, I'm assuming in your practice, you've encountered this at least once or twice. Oh, all the time. And this was the thing that led me to feeling like, wow, I'm not actually making an impact in the ICU anymore because if the best thing I've done all day is hang a morphine drip, now don't get me wrong, it's super important to help people die well. But if that's the best thing I'm doing all day, how am I helping people live better? I don't want people to get to the ICU. I don't want that. We don't do good things to people there, okay? So you don't want to be there. Uh, and it's just, this is like what happens to people, right? The days go by and all of a sudden before you know it, you're struck with an illness. And let's face it, at that point, it doesn't matter if you've been successful or not in business because you won't be able to enjoy the fruits of your labor. And so, you know, this goes back to just, hey, I had to face this. And I, this is, there's no shame in this for anyone that's listening to this podcast. I had to face this with myself. I was like, I do not have occupational wellness. I want to create a wellness business and teach people how to be well. Mm. And I'm a hypocrite. You know, mm. I don't like what I'm doing right now. And yet I continue to do it. Why? Why, why do we do that? And so I had to face that. I and so. It. It's it, that's a, that's a really tough thing to do, and I you know I just would tell people encourage them that you know and we can go through some things that we've kind of outlined for entrepreneurs in my business um, that we encourage people that we you know help and coach that are entrepreneurs on things that they can do and guess what if you make yourself better your business is going to be better you're right. going to be more creative you're going to be more productive you're going to help more people you're going to have the energy to do that. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Now, I want, what I do want to talk about, though, is the name of your site. It's theorganicsouth.com. Now, very few people I run into associate South or South, the <laughs> Southern U.S. with anything having to do with healthy food, let alone organic. So... Was that intentional? Are you just, are you messing with us here? <laughs> That's moron, right? You're like, who are you? Um, I mean, that was absolutely intentional. And I, at first, even beginning these conversations about, you know, you come up with a business name. These are the first brainstorm things that you do when you even think about doing something in your own space. And it's hard, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes to kind of capture what you're thinking or feeling. And a lot of people said to me, well, you're limiting yourself because you're only limiting your audience to the South. And I'm like, no, mm. you know, what compelled me is that it's going to take a revolution to make this part of the country healthier. And if I only end up being in this part of the country, I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> I'm always too busy. Okay. Right. <laughs> but so my goal and thought process in that was what if in 10 years by having these conversations, by doing the things, these things that we know we need to teach people to do, what if the South is thought of just like the West, Western coast of the United States right. as, as that healthy. Right. And we have a lot of people in our neighborhood in Serenby here, it's, you know, a very well-known community actually internationally that are from California and understand wellness and um, they're my people. I love them. Like, you know, I was talking with one of them the other day, and she's like, I mean, they had Tupperware. We glass. You know, and so, but that was absolutely intentional because for me, it was just, wow, if we can buy this movement, just revolutionize this part of the country, that always is going to trickle out to everywhere. So it's okay if I'm not worldwide. It's okay if I'm not national. We got a lot of work to do here. But, and I really kind of describe that on my website is most people laugh when they talk about health in the South, but we're going to change that. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 and I totally get it, but there's something that you said that I'm just curious. You mentioned a wellness community. So it's kind of a two-part question. One, what is a wellness community? And do I 
in order to make these changes, are you saying that I got to live in one? Absolutely not. But I will say this. The Organic South was born by me wanting to visit some local farms and just blog about them to kind of help people understand that you can have access to local organic food. You just got to do a little digging and find a local farm and visit it. So we came here to Serenby Farms and um, careful when you come here for just, you know, a look at the farm. We were contracting on a house six weeks later. And so... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> surprise it's yeah. a very intentional community and you're gonna these communities are coming about more and more now it's a very intentional community and it's not just about the food here and that we eat from the farm but it's really actually about social wellness and that's what really changed for us is that we didn't realize living in atlanta how isolated we were and how important connection was to us and our wellness and feeling connected to other people. So the community is actually planned in such a way that you have spontaneous meetings with people, you know, you have, it's just the way it's designed. There's no front yards. All the houses are pulled to the front of the sidewalks to encourage and facilitate that connection, that community. And uh, there's walking trails everywhere. So we do a lot more walking. And I mean, this is a choice, right? You know, we choose not to have a golf cart because we're going to force ourselves to walk. But do you have to live in a community like this to be well? Absolutely not. You can have wellness anywhere. Anywhere, It's a choice. It's about an intention. That's why when you really understand the true meaning of wellness, it's something that you're doing that's intentional. You're making a choice. So you don't have to live in a community like this that you know has intentional social communications. You can do that on your own by making sure that you're keeping those connections with your people, even though you're growing a business, right? Right. Relaxation and connecting with people stimulates so many wonderful neurotransmitters in our brain, feel good hormone hormones that help us be more well. Social connection is super, super important. And I've been in periods of extreme growth in my business where I had to say no to dinners with my friends. Like I'm in this period of time and I have to focus on this. But I made sure that I took breaks from that and I re back engage with my relationships, for example. Yeah, totally get that. Totally get that. So um, let's let let me ask this, because you mentioned earlier that there was things that uh, we as entrepreneurs could do. Uh, (laughs) What are those? So. How long is the podcast again? <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Okay, let's say give us five we, things, five quick things that we could do then. Could we have a to be continued on the next podcast? Yeah, I know, right? No. no, but we'll make it very simple here, right? And these are these are big broad things that you can do and I'm going to give you just a couple examples under each thing. So, I kind of title this like you know, six ways to increase your productivity as an entrepreneur. And it's an opening discussion. So while they may seem broad, just know that you can choose in every category one small thing to do. And the first thing I have to talk about, because this is so big, is food. I mean, you're not going to buy it. You're not going to buy a super fancy car and put mud in it for gasoline, right? That's essentially what we do to our bodies on a daily basis. Wow. Thank culture. you for being so descriptive. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally, and I've seen the product of it over years and years and years. So you have to put good. And when you guys think about it as entrepreneurs in this way, though, you will think of it differently. Like if you think about changing your food program could make you could make your business double in productivity by next year. Would you do it? Yesterday. Okay. So this is so important. We put so much processed food in our body that believe it or not, articles describe slows down our mental clarity blocks our creativity and just doesn't make us feel good overall. So you want to talk about having energy and feeling good. So really when we're talking about food, we're talking about minimally processed, try not to eat things out of a box, organic. It's so important. We don't even think about the pesticides that we're putting in our body every day. 
And people always say to me, oh, organic is so expensive, though. And I'm like, oh, man, so are your Tory Burch shoes. And so are the <laughs> God. So it really is changing your mindset, right? And stop putting chemicals in our bodies, just whole food. And don't get me wrong, I'm not perfect on this either. But I try and eat most of the time just whole foods. Um, lots of non-processed, things not out of a box. You know, fast food is a different story for a different day. And I promise you, I mean, choose one thing, you know, that that you're like, okay, I know when I eat this, it's not good. Or I'm eating this multiple times per day. I'm going to the vending machine. This is this is means you have to invest a little time in this. You're investing in your best asset. <laughs> Take time for meal yeah. preparation. It, just do it. You're in, and for people that have difficulty with access, this is definitely more hard. You have to take the time to do this. But I'm telling you, you are your best asset. Take the time in the morning to do some meal prep to plan out, you know, things that are simple whole foods. Uh, just put goodness into your body. And really, this is, doesn't have to be a long podcast in and of itself. Most of us know you don't have to be super educated to know what's not good for your body. Cheetos are not good. That's not food. But okay. when they're on top of a chili cheese hot dog, I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. And what if I told you by eating that every day that your business was going to suffer? You would totally look at it differently. You are correct. So three times a week is fine then, right? See, and that's what I think you're up against. It's often we're trying to figure out what's the minimum we can do as opposed to try to figure out the maximum. What Absolutely. That. And, man, uh, every time I keep mentioning something, I, I, in fact, there's a part of me that doesn't want to talk any longer bef because <laughs> you're going to start mentioning things that I, I know I should change, but I don't want to hear it, you know, <laughs> at the same oh, time. Oh, that's the human condition, right? Right. Well, I can tell you this. This is what's interesting about food is that when we went through, I'm always looking for new ways to be healthy and kind of to push the envelope of what is healthy. And so we kind of tried this program last year and I was like, I'm not giving that up. I'm not. I love it. I'm not giving up cheese. I don't care what anybody says about Did you about say no dairy. cheese? Yeah, no, well, we went for a period without cheese. And nice. I love to listen to Sean Stevenson from the Model Health Show. And I listened to one of his podcasts. And I was like, I'm not giving up cheese. And it was like just this trial of like, just give it up for a certain period of time and then reintroduce it and see what happens to you. And so I gave up cheese for a while. And then I ate cheese one day and I was so lethargic, I couldn't even get off the couch. And, you know, you dive into this topic and it has casomorphones that are like morphine like substances that make you lethargic. Now, most people you're like, don't take away my cheese. But I'm like, well, what if eating cheese in the afternoon just crushed the rest of your productivity for your business? You've got to look at it in a different way. Awesome. So start with one thing. Start with one thing. Okay. Uh, you know, just, you know, start by doing one thing. If you don't eat breakfast in the morning, you know, breaking fast, there's a reason we call it that. Start by just putting something whole, clean, and good into your body to start your metabolism, to give your body some glucose so your brain can function. Start with that one thing. This is not like yeah. revolutionizing your whole diet. People are going to freak out when they listen to this. They're like, oh my God, this is too hard. It's okay. But, yeah. It's all right, but it's got to start it's somewhere. Like for you, you're like, I'm going to hydrate this year. I'm going to be more hydrated. That's, That's it. That, start it, with one thing. One, one at a time. One at a time. So um, then, I know that there's a number of people who have been listening, and, and there's probably a few of them that are like, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm ready. Okay. I, I, let me go find out more uh, about what Eliza's talking about because you know what I, I do need to do something what's going to be the best way for them to, to follow up with you to find out more about what you have going on and, and to maybe even begin their process of their own wellness journey um, anyone can reach out to me on the organic um, my email is Eliza at the organic I'm on Facebook and Instagram. So those are great ways to connect with me too. Um, just by private messaging, I always respond to everyone. Uh, those are usually the best ways to get in touch with me. Got it. Got it. Now, as we wind down here, I've got a final question for you because I'm kind of curious to hear your response. Let's, um, 
pretend for a moment that someone listening is ready to begin their entrepreneurial journey. They're going to, you know, begin by maybe they're standing in front of the superhero outfit store ready to pick out their cape and tights because they're going to do this thing. No longer are they going to suffer with what you call the occupational illness. Uh, They're going to become more occupationally well. However, as you know, Uh, When we make decisions like this, often there's a companion, and that companion comes in the form of a voice that reminds us of what we can't do, how it won't work, and and for some people, they're related to that voice. Mm. So my question to you is as follows. Let's pretend that they're actually going to follow through, Eliza. They're going to do what you suggest, and they're going to do so in 24 to 48 hours from right now. What would you suggest that they do? You mean to break into the entrepreneurial space and overcome those barriers? Yes. I would say go to a person that you trust the most, that builds you up the most, and ask them this question. How do you see me? How do you see me? Because the problem with us and breaking into that space is we don't, see ourselves sometimes how other people see us. So many people spoke into me, you can do this. Like you're going to be awesome at this. You do it all the time every day. This is what you should do. But we just make the barriers and the excuses bigger than than what we really need to be doing. And to go to a person who has spoken positivity into them, who believes in them and who knows their potential and to ask them that question, how do you see me? Wow. How- you see me doing this and and to write that down and to think on that every day hang it on your mirror do whatever you do for that so you know put it in front of you every day that even though sometimes we don't see ourselves all the potential that was that's within us but usually there's one person in our life that loves us that has filled us up that sees all that we have to give and if you can write that mantra down of what that person speaks into you and you absolutely meditate on it, eat it, sleep it, pray it every day and fill yourself up. Guess what they've proven? They've proven that that actually helps us make more positive connections and pathways in our brain. And we actually release more feel good hormones and neurotransmitters just by doing that. And before you know it, you'll believe it too. And then how amazing that you get to go and share whatever gift that you have, whatever thing that you need to be doing with other people. And that's impactful. That's really what it's about. It's not about making money. It's not about, you know, you know, doing all the things that we really think it's about. Really the thing that drives us inside is purpose and impact. And because this is proven, plenty of entrepreneurs make a ton of money and they still go and they start new businesses and they do new things because it's the climb sometimes that that drives us that we love. And so I would just, that would be my encouragement today is to people to go and do that. Because if you, if you get your mindset right in the beginning, there's nothing that can stop you. Yeah. And then maybe we won't care about half price wings on Tuesdays. Good point. (laughs) Good point. <laughs> I will say this. I cannot not mention this, but the thing that really changed my life related to stress, sleep, and increased productivity and energy, and it's big now, it's exploding, is super high quality essential oils. People just don't realize what an aroma can do for your brain and for your body medicinally. They have absolutely changed my life hands down. So I would say that's another thing you could do today if you haven't explored the world of really high quality essential oils. uh, Find someone that is using, I love doTERRA, that's the company that I love. Uh, Find someone that's using some doTERRA essential oils and get some today because let me tell you something, I take two drops of peppermint and go have a meeting and I'm like wide awake, ready to go. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I definitely thank you for being brave and going out there and making it happen, sounding the alarm, even though, you know, it can feel like an overwhelming task uh, and, and actually building a business around it, getting occupationally well, being brave enough to go out there and do it and more or less challenging each and every one of us to be our best selves in various different ways as well. And, and taking the time to share your knowledge, wisdom, as well as your insight here with us today at The Cashflow Diary. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here and to open the door to this conversation. And hopefully um, we'll be 
on the podcast in 10 years talking about how amazingly healthy the, the South is. And we will be a model for wellness in the future. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for you to move at the speed of instruction. What does that mean today? That means the organicsouth.com. Go there. Pick one thing, one thing you heard today that you could use to begin to make a small shift. You've heard it said before that if you change the direction of a ship by just one degree, by the time it reaches its destination, it's a completely different place. And that's exactly what we're talking about when it comes to making sure your best asset, you, is in perfect, optimal condition. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been fun talking to you today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.